Hello people of the web and YouTube, it's Gator, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to set up an EMU MMC on the Nintendo Switch. Now for those of you that don't know what an EMU MMC is, it's basically a fake system NAND. We clone our original NAND and we put it on our SD card. This allows us to do updates and things without actually updating the normal NAND on the Nintendo Switch. This is very useful if you want to, let's say run homebrew for instance, yet keep your normal stock NAND default. This is good if you still want to play online, but you still also want to do retro games for instance through RetroArch or something on the homebrew side of things. Now with that said, let's get to this. First of all, we're going to need a partitioning tool. I use Mini Tool Partition Wizard and basically we want to erase the card and create two partitions. To do this, you erase the card, put it in your computer, right click on the partition and then you want to create a new one and you have to do it in this order. We have to make the first partition which is for our Switch. This can either be FAT32 or XFAT format and we must have an allocate, unallocated space of around 30 gigabytes. After you do this you just gotta hit OK and you should see that we have a new partition and we should have an un unallocated partition after we hit OK. If you see this, be sure to hit apply in the top left. Mini Tool Partition Wizard is kind of weird, so you got to actually apply the change first before you work on the next partition, I found out. Now after that partition has been applied and made, you can go over to the unallocated space. And you can leave this unallocated, I found out, but I like to format it as FAT32 since um, all the software and stuff in Hecate likes to look for a FAT32 partition. So basically from here we set it as a FAT32 partition by right, create, right clicking it and hitting create and then we can name it whatever we want. I just called it an MU NAND but it can really be anything. From here we go back up to the top left and hit apply. Now we're essentially done. We got two partitions. However, you don't want to load your software up on the 30 gigabyte partition. So be sure to load in all your homebrew and a hecatate files and things onto the switch partition. But yeah, speaking of the switch partition, this wasn't really gonna be a how-to on how to set up um, a jailbreak for instance, but it's gonna kinda turn out to be that way because we gotta do everything from scratch in order to set up an EMU MMC properly. So from here we can head over to our favorite site, the Homebrew Setup Wizard. Okay, it's not called the Homebrew Setup Wizard. That sounded cooler in my head. It's actually Homebrew SD Setup, and I'll leave a link down below to this site. But from here, we want to select Atmosphere, and we want to basically select our packages that we want after that. I selected a few, and you guys could probably see that on screen. If you just want to do the same, feel free to do the same. You don't have to do the same packages or anything. Just be sure to select the Fuse A Primary Payload at the end, as well as the tag of our RCMG. UI. Those two are the most important here. But yeah, since the site does take a while to set up your packages and to download them, I decided to download this early on just to save some time. So I downloaded the package, unzipped it, and we're basically towards the final steps here of, well, getting all the software on our SD card and ready to go. Now once we got our files unzipped, we just gotta copy everything over from from the SD folder in the SD setup of course. You don't want to copy the PC files or anything. Just the stuff in the SD folder we want to copy over to our Switch's SD card. Now once we got the files on our SD card, we can well eject the SD card. I recommend doing this safely because this is a lot like um, adding games to a flash drive for the PS2. If you don't eject safely and you don't do a disk to fragment every now and then, it can kind of mess things up, especially if you're using an XFAT partition. But yeah, with that said, once you got your files on there and you eject the SD card, it is time to, well, put it in our Switch. So yeah guys, as you can see I got the SD card in my Switch and my Switch is now put into recovery mode. This is done with the jig, however with newer Switches you can't use the jig method to well boot into recovery mode. So you'll have to look up how to get into recovery mode on your specific kind of Switch. In my case, since I mine uses the old Fuse A exploit, I can just use a jig or my computer to push the payload over to my Switch. 
Now from here, once the switch is actually opened up into the Hecatate software on our SD card, we can now head over to EMUMMC. Under that category, then we want to hit Create, then head over to SD Partition. You can do an SD, well, file, but it's a lot slower, and if you do a partition, which we already have the SD card set up to do, it will load a lot faster, and it won't look any different than your normal stock NAND, trust me. But yeah, with that said, be sure to select SD partition, and now if you get this pop-up, you pretty much did everything correctly. You just want to hit continue, and from here it will begin copying over everything from the stock NAND onto our emulated NAND. Now this will take a while, it took me around 17 minutes because I'm using a faster card, which I recommend, but if you're using a slower SD card or a larger one, you may have to wait even longer. I have had to wait for 30 minutes before with a slower card, trust me it's not fun, but just let the software do its thing, and when it's done, it should all work out and I will get back to you when mine is finished. Okay, mine is done and finished. I know I go through this a little bit quick here, but what, what you want to do is hit close, go under the change EMU MMC, and select SD1. It should be the only option under that menu, and once we select it, you should see an enabled message pop up under the EMU MMC category. Again, sorry I filmed this kind of bad, but if you get that, all you have to do now is go over to launch, and you should have a new option called CFW EMU MMC. From here we click on that and we should boot up into our emulated NAND. Just be aware do not hit stock CFW, you will get your system flagged and you will get banned from Nintendo's online services if you do that, so just be sure you hit EMU MMC when you boot up. But yeah, as you can see we got, well, our Switch booted, and to prove that we're on an emulated NAND, we can do one of two things. We can actually install a theme, turn the Switch on and off, and you will see the theme won't be on the stock NAND, but when you boot into your emulated NAND, the theme will be there. An even easier way of, well telling if you're on a emulated NAND is to actually go under system settings. If you go under system and look under system update, you will have an E at the end of your current version or software version. If you have the E at the end of this string, that means you're on an emulated NAND and everything you've done worked correctly. So yeah guys, that's basically it. From here we can do all our homebrew stuff and not get banned or flagged over one when we go to do online games on our stock NAND. Anyway, I hope this guide was able to help you out, and I'm sorry it was kind of all over the place. To be honest, I kind of rushed some things because I was setting this up for my girlfriend and all that, and I needed it by the next day, so forgive me, the footage wasn't all that great. I will make another guide in the future, but I just wanted to point out the SD partitioning and how do you set that up, because it is very important when you set up an EMU MMC. If you're following my guide or someone else's and you're running into issues, be sure to format the switch partition first before you work on the EMU MMC partition. If you work on the smaller one first and the larger one, then the small one will be the first partition, and when you try to boot into Hecatate, you'll get the older Hecatate menu and not your new one that you threw on the SD card. Trust me, I learned this the hard way, and uh, this is why I made this video, because I didn't want to make that same mistake again. Anyway, I hope it helps you out, and I hope that at least this guide gets you on the right track. If it was a little too confusing and all over the place, don't worry. Once I get another SD card again, I will make another guide on how to do this. Because overall, it's fairly simple to do, and it shouldn't take you more than, well... 18 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, because you gotta wait for it, but still, it's a really easy thing to set up, and that's basically it. So with that said, I'm gonna leave this video off here now, DTPK, signing off. Peace. As well as the loader itself, the loader itself works almost immediately every time I plug it in. Now, you want to plug in your flash drive either up to the game port or up to your controller.